Welcome to, you guessed it, another episode of the cut content of Spec Ops The Line. And this will be another video focusing on the 2010 multiplayer beta of the game. This will be delving into the story leftovers hidden within it. There's already been a video about all of Walker's lines, which indicates that the squad system is going to be more complex and there are going to be more options for giving orders around instead of just the straightforward point-and-click stuff we got in the final game. There would have been options for Luco and Adams to man turrets, to target specific enemies, to move freely. There would have been an option to cancel orders. And, as well, there seems like, seems like it would have been more complex overall. I suppose they narrowed it down and simplified it in order to make it more accessible, or maybe these specific commands just weren't working. It's worth noting that pretty much all of Walker's specific squad commands use placeholder lines, at least within this build. Going through those files revealed they're all done with text-to-speech. Levels themselves, it's tough to tell how they're structured, Seeing as how we don't really have like, any single player content in it, any specific levels, there are only the three multiplayer levels that we've got. But fortunately, the objectives are still left in, so we can actually get an idea of how the story played out. And these aren't even the same as the objectives that were possibly left over in the final game. Starting from the very first mission, we have a different set of objectives. They are as follows. Move toward road, investigate looters, question surrendering guy, find source of radio signal, order Lugo to turn off signal, rescue unknown soldiers, move to hotel, defend position until arrival of storm, advance under cover of sandstorm. And the main title for these objectives is Get Into Dubai. This sounds like it combines at least the first two levels, possibly even incorporating elements of the third. It doesn't sound like you would fall into the hotel, but it's tough to, tough to tell because that concept also popped up in some of the trailers. But advancing to the cover of the sandstorm, it sounds like what you do at the end of chapter three to get into the nest. Either way, it's interesting because you would have actually... I'm assuming you would have talked to one of the marauders or the insurgents or whatever they're called. You possibly would have fought them. One of them would have surrendered and you'd question them. You would turn off the radio signal, presumably still have that standoff with the hostage situation, try to rescue the damn 33rd soldiers, and then fail, and then move on to the hotel from there. Mission 2 is given the title Investigate Hotel Complex for the objectives. The objectives are, in order, defend against incoming bandits, proceed deeper into building, investigate signs of civilians, find exit out of refugee camp, fight down to ground floor of lobby, capture turret, and destroy glass facade. It sounds like a combo of chapters three and four in the final game, where you're holding out against the initial insurgents coming in from above. Then you get in deeper. You don't investigate civilians in the final one. I mean, you do come across a few, but the area is largely devoid of them when you're in the refugee camp. And then capturing the turret, fighting down to the ground floor the lobby and destroying the glass facade. Those are all essential parts of Chapter 4 in the main game. For Mission 3, the objectives are given the title of Find the Source of Daniel's Signal. There are four objectives. Find way down into Gorge, survive attack of looters, follow signal, and escape from ambush. And this is an interesting twist, because we're around the point that Chapter 5 should be, and it's still describing you fighting the looters, fighting the insurgents. Now, I don't know what that's meant to be. Were they still going to be hostile at this point? Were they still going to be an enemy presence? Were the 33rd opposed to you at this point? I mean, they were still going to be enemies. That much is certain. But 
After Chapter 3, the insurgents are no longer a threat in Spec Ops. They stop appearing as enemies. But this one, it describes around the area where you'd be fighting the 33rd through that building, surviving an attack by looters. I mean, maybe they could just be talking about the damned, but you'd think they would refer to them as soldiers or something. Either way, following the signal and escaping from the ambush describes Chapter 6. I don't know if Walker still falls off the side of the building, but presumably the radio man still sets a trap, and they have to escape from it. And probably Daniels is still dead if the Exodus objectives are anything to go by. So, Mission 4's objectives are given the title Proceed Toward Conrad. First objective is get to the surface, then find Lieutenant Gould, then make your way to the city gate. This just sounds like Mission 7, Chapter 7. Not much is really that different. So, this would have been the battle chapter. Possibly you would have found the flamethrower in this if the early trailers are anything to go by, but that's also speculation. Now, this is the interesting part, because it seems like it skips the white phosphorus section, the mortar section. Mission 5 is just called Proceed Toward Conrad for objectives, and there are five objectives total. Get down on Main Street, survive Conrad's assault, seek shelter, Help Riggs against Conrad's forces, and then, once again, help Riggs against Conrad's forces. So this combines chapters 9 and 10, roughly. Seems to skip chapter 8. And it's unclear if that choice to shoot the civilian or the soldier or to attack Conrad's snipers is there, or if Conrad would have just attacked you right down the gate. Because in the original mission, you do get down on Main Street, and there is an assault by Conrad's men, but between but um, between those moments, there's a choice that Walker's given that you can handle in several different ways. It's interesting this leads right into the opening of Chapter 10, and seems to close out right at that point. So Mission 6 is called Help Rake Stealing Water, for the objective titles. There are seven objectives. Follow Riggs toward Water Depot, open door from the other side, get to Water Depot, secure the water transports, defend water trucks, survive ambush, take down Chopper. This sounds like both parts of Chapter 10 in the final game, because there is a Chopper that shows up when you're on the truck and you're using that grenade launcher. I'm guessing the ambush just would have been the Humvees and other stuff attacking it. So, this is pretty much about the same. I don't know if the open door from the other side part is anything new. I know Riggs does something like that at some point in the final game. So, Mission 7, the objectives are, give, are just called Reunite with Squad, and there are three of them. Find squad mates, help squad against attackers, and defend squad through Maul. So this would have been Chapter 11 alone, and it doesn't sound like it would have been that much different. There's nothing about dealing with Riggs, but presumably you would have either killed him or let him burn under the crushed water trucks. This one is interesting. Mission 8 has two objectives and has the title Meet the Radio Man. The first objective is move up the large dune and then move to the radio station. This isn't present in the final build. There's nothing like this. You just get right to the building next to the radio station in the final game. There's no exploration segment where you're going up a dune at all. So it sounds like this could be a cut chapter. And then mission nine seems to start right where the finale of the Radio Man's chapter ends, which is chapter 12 in the final game. The title given here is Escape from Radio Station. Your objectives are escape to the helicopter, defend helicopter, blow up tower, and shake off pursuers. So, sounds like Mission 8 might have actually gone to the point where you confront the radio man. All this stuff that's mentioned happens in the final game right after you confront him and Lugo kills him, Walker makes an announcement, and the damn try to intercept you. 
Although it sounds like it also combines the uh, extra part where you're reliving the prologue and to another part of the level. Mission 10 is given the title Move Toward Tower. Your objectives are help Adams, find Lugo, neutralize attackers, reach Lugo, and get out of refugee camp. That sounds like it would have been just how the normal chapter of Adams goes anyway. It doesn't sound that much different. Presumably it still would have ended with Lugo getting lynched by the refugees and then Walker making that choice, whether to get revenge or scare them off. Mission 11 has two objectives, and the title is Get Into Tower. The first is Neutralize Bridge Defense, and the second is Survive Counter-Strike. So, sounds like you would have just proceeded through Chapter 14, as per usual, and held off the attacks. I guess maybe you would have fought against the men coming to confront you, instead of running at the end, where Adam ends up getting killed. Possibly, if you consider the DLC that was never made to be a part of the story. And then that leaves us with Mission 12, which is just called Meet Conrad. And here we have a surprising change. We're given three objectives. Move up the tower, survive ambush, and find Conrad. What's really interesting about this is that you can see in an old preview image for this level that's found in the beta files what looks like Walker getting into a firefight with people at the tower. So it's possible that in this stage there would have been one final gunfight, an ambush by Conrad's remaining men before he confronted him. I'm not sure if at this point in the story they had gone ahead with the idea of Conrad always being dead, but nonetheless, I mean, it would have probably fitted more to have him lay one final trap for Walker instead of it be all being in his head. Presumably Adams would be dead by this point as well. But it's interesting. I did not expect for there to be combat in Chapter 15. The final level doesn't really seem well set up for it. I mean, maybe you could have had a gunfight in the penthouse, but I don't think there would have been that much room to maneuver. I don't know, maybe they had a different design earlier on. The missions themselves also had different names, as did the difficulties. Some of them sound similar to Call of Duty ones. Easy was called Recruit. Normal was called Soldier. Hard was called Commando. And the FUBAR difficulty was called Dog of War. As for the mission titles, would have gone in this order. The Evacuation, Airplane, The Dune, Underneath, the Refugees, The Edge, the Pit, Battle, The Gate, The Road, Rigs, Stealing Water, Alone, The Mall, Up the Dune, Rooftops, Adams, Lugo, The Bridge, Welcome, and Epilogue. Some of these line up with the final game, and it's interesting that they are also broken up into different subsections here. Like, Mission 1 has three parts listed. Mission 2 has two. And these line up closer with the final uh, structure of the missions. So, like, Mission 2 is listed as underneath and the refugees, which would have matched up with chapters 3 and 4. Something interesting to note as well is that in this epilogue is spelled without the U-E at the end, so it's just E-P-I-L-O-G, and this goes for other times it pops up. There are also alternate chapter names listed here, like some are about the same, but others are a little different. For the SP chapter titles, the first is Desert, the second is The Nest, third is The Gorge, four is The Gate, five is The Road, six is Water, seven is The Squad, eight is The Radio Man, nine is The Graveyard, ten is The Tower, and eleven is Epilogue. 
Another fun fact here is that the subtitle names all line up with the file names. Except epilogue is still called chapter 15 here. Strange how it has different subheading. I don't know if they're factoring in cut chapters or if it's just them accounting for the subchapters. And the math doesn't quite add up for the chapter totals in the other option, but they're pretty close. There's also reference to a tutorial. In the, the original game, the final build, did have a t sort of tutorial at the start with how combat worked and aiming and grenades and everything. But this specifically lists things like interrogating, move up to the surrendered enemy and hold player action button interrogate to interrogate, which is a feature that's not, fe that's not present at all in the final one. I mean, there's a cutscene where Walker interrogates a 33rd soldier, but that doesn't have any interaction at all in it. There are also more commands mentioned, like a move command, a regroup command, and a squad command menu. Additionally, there are also different loading screen tips. None of them have that eerie fourth wall breaking approach that the final game does, but they list features that aren't mentioned in the final game, which makes them interesting in of itself. They list things like the suppressive fire squad command, the dispatch game mode, using C4, which appears in cutscenes, but I don't think you can use it in the final game. Option like uh, characters like gunners and enforcers, sleepers and harvesters for multiplayer. The cut feature is a multiplayer like having helicopters drop supplies and powerful weapons. Just a whole list of stuff that didn't quite make it into the final game. They really had a different vision for it, it seems like. What do you guys think of all this? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. It's incredible. I mean, the basic design is the same. The basic story structure seems like it's the same, but the way it's executed feels totally different. A lot of different small changes add up. It's something else. So let me know what you guys think. Love to hear your thoughts and what you all make of these early story elements, early gameplay elements, and so on and so forth. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Cut Content of Spec Ops The Line. Have a good one.